In this video, 2.11b, which is a continuation of the previous video, 2.11a, I'll be continuing to show you how to set up and solve physics problems using the basic kinematics equations. If you didn't watch video 2.11a first, you might want to do that, or you can get right into the problems in this video. So here we are with the first problem in video 2.11b. Remember, um, if you have any problems with, um, <laughs> with these problems in this video, you should probably go back and watch video 2.11a, as this video 2.11b is a continuation from the previous video. All right, so here we go. Sidlali's motorcycle is parked on Elmont Road. All right, now remember, what you want to do here is you're going to watch me do the problem, all right, and then after you've watched me do the problem, go, come back in the video to the point where the, this problem is blank, like, like right now. I haven't filled anything in yet. Come back to this point and try to do the problem completely on your own. After you watch me once, finish the problem, come back, Make a note of the time right now. Come back to this point and, and try to do the entire problem on your own. If you have any problems doing the problem on your own, then watch me do the problem one more time. All right, so here we go. Let's fill in all of the givens. All right, so Sidlali's motorcycle is parked. That means the initial is zero. If her motorcycle is parked, that tells us that V initial is zero. Sidlali's motorcycle is parked on Elmont Road. She comes out of D&D &D with dinner for her family. She starts her bike and accelerates at a rate of 2.00 meters per second squared, uh, let's see, north. Okay, so it's going to be positive. So her acceleration is positive, 2.00 meters per second squared, all right, and that would be north. Now, um, over a distance of 60 meters, all right, and again, that's north, so positive 60 meters is the distance that she covers. Okay, now, how long did it take her to cover the 60 meters? So what we want is an amount of time. So we'll put a line here, how many seconds, question mark. How long did it take her to cover the 60 meters? Now, what is her velocity after three seconds? Now, I don't know, I don't know how long it took her to cover the 60 meters. It might have been two seconds. It might have been eight seconds. I don't know. Uh, it might have been three seconds. We'll find out when we finish part A here. Right? But there might be a second time. All right, there's going to be the amount of time here, which might not be three seconds, and here is a different amount of time. So there's probably going to be a second time. We've got this time and this time. I don't know if they're the same, so there might be a second time. So I'm going to label this time A and this three seconds. Oh, we do know that. I'm going to label this three seconds time B. All right, 3.00 seconds. If it turns out that this is three seconds, then I can erase the time B and just put in one time. All right, now, what is her velocity uh, after the three seconds? So we're trying to find her final velocity here, and what is her velocity at the end of the 60 meter distance? Okay, so there might be two final velocities also. All right, so we've got V final, we're trying to find here, all right, and we're trying to find another V final, all right, over there. All right, so we're saying there might be two different times and there might be two different final velocities. How fast is she going after three seconds and how fast is she going at the end of the 60 meters? All right, so um, we've got all the givens. All right, I'm going to erase all this. I'm going to move the givens over to here, and then we'll start doing the problems. Remember, you want to watch me do it once, 
then come back to the blank problem. Try to do it on your own. If you have any problems, watch me do it a second time. So, how long did it take her to cover the 60 meters? We're trying to find a time, so we need an equation with time. We've got acceleration, we've got V initial, we've got a displacement, all right, distance or displacement. So, um, I'm going to pick equation number four, D equals VIT plus one half AT squared, because we're trying to find a time. We have V initial, we have D, we have A, all right, so we have, we have everything, all right, the only thing we're trying to find is time. Now, this time is going to go away anyway, because V initial is zero. That means that this whole thing here is going to cancel out. In other words, if V initial is zero, whatever this time is here, it's zero times this number. So this whole thing goes away, not just the V initial. V initial is zero. Goodbye, and goodbye anything that's multiplied by, by zero. Okay, so the equation we're left with, D equals one-half AT squared. We're trying to find time. Let's get the T by itself on the left side. Let's multiply both sides by two. All right, this is a two on top, two on the bottom, cancel. And we've got 2D equals AT squared. All right, now divide both sides by A. The A's cancel. And what we get is T squared equals all right, 2D over A. I don't want T squared. I want T. So I take the square root of both sides. The square root and the square cancel. And we move this equation up. T equals the square root of 2D over A. All right, so here we go. Let's get rid of all that. Okay, so T equals the square root of 2D over A. All right, everything's positive. It's all north, one direction. So T equals... The square root of 2 times 60.0 meters. A is 2 meters per second squared. Okay. 2 times 60 is 120. Divided by 2 is 60. All right. So we've got the square root of 60 for an answer. All right. What's the square root of 60? Here we go. 60 square root 7.745 all right now this is called truncating i'm going to truncate since we're working with three significant figures i'm going to truncate at the fourth significant figure so we've got or i should say the fourth number that i have here 7.745 so i'm chopping it off right there i'm not rounding all right it was actually 749 i'm truncating at four, one, two, three, four. All right, so I truncate right there. If I use this number later, I'm going to use that truncated five. All right, now my, my final answer would be rounded to three significant figures. So we round that up. My final answer is T equals 7.75 seconds. All right, that's my answer. Okay, now, if I want to use this number in a later problem, right, I would use 7.745. Right, so this is truncated. Chop it off. This is rounded to the correct number of significant figures. Three significant figures. One, two, three. One, two, three. Don't care about zero. One, two, three. Okay? All right, the next problem. B. What is her velocity after three seconds? All right, so B. What is her velocity after three seconds? Let's see. Can we use this equation? V final equals V initial plus AT. Yes, we can. All right. We know V initial. We know A. 
and we know that we're looking for her velocity after three seconds. Okay, and by the way, now we know that at three seconds, she has not covered the full 60 meters. It took her 7.75 seconds to cover the full 60 meters. So this is some time, this three second time is some time before she got to the end of the 60 meters. All right, so here we go. We know that V initial is zero. Goodbye. Get rid of it right away. Don't start plugging in zeros. All right, get rid of anything that is zero. Get rid of it. All right, get rid of it right away. Now, this is our, this, let's see, this was our first time. So this is time A, all right? And this is the second time that we're talking about. So this is going to be time B, the three seconds. All right, so this is final velocity B, all right? So here we go. Um, equals A times T. All right, so the acceleration was 2 meters per second squared. Now, actually, actually, you can do this in your head. She started from a velocity of 0. She increased her velocity. That's what acceleration means, increasing or decreasing your velocity, by 2 meters per second every second. So after the first second, her speed would have been 2. After the second second, her speed would have been 4. After the third second, her speed is 2 times 3, or 6 meters per second. All right, her final velocity is 6 meters per second at the end of 3 seconds. All right, now, part C. What is her final velocity at the end of the 60 meters? Well, at the end of the 60 meters, her time is 7.75 seconds. All right, so we can use this time right, to figure out what her speed is at the end of the 60 meters. Because the 60 meters and the 7.745 go together. All right, so here we go. Let's use the same equation. All right, so this time V final A, all right, is V initial plus A T A. The first time. All right, we know that the initial velocity is zero. All right, so V final A is a, which is 2 meters per second squared, times this time, all right? And again, this is an answer. This is a number that I use for a later problem, all right? And it's, it's probably not a big deal. If you accidentally use this number, all right, I don't believe it's actually going to be marked wrong. But this is a little bit more correct. All right, here we go. 7.745 seconds. Okay, so 2 times 7.745, all right, 2, nope, don't want that, 2 times 7.745, all right, her final velocity at the end of the 60 meters is, V final A is uh, 15.49, all right, uh, meters per second, all right, now let's round that to three significant figures. What does the 9 do? Remember, this is truncated. What does the 9 do to the 4? It kicks it up to a 5. So rounded to the correct number of significant figures, and I know my problem is finished, so I don't need that truncated version. All right, there's my final answer. All right, so um, everything makes sense. All right, this is how fast she's going. She's accelerating the whole time. Her initial velocity, well, her initial velocity was zero, but she's accelerating the whole time from an initial velocity of zero. So she's just going to go faster and faster and faster in some direction. The direction happens to be north. After three seconds, her speed is six meters per second. After 7.7, .7, etc., seconds, her speed is faster. Makes sense. Very simple, very straightforward, really. Now, you want to go back. Go back to a spot in the video where you can see the whole blank uh, question. Try to do it on your own. If you get stuck, you can't do it on your own, then go back and watch me do it one more time. All right? Good luck. Problem number four. Giovanni drops a nickel from rest into the Grand Canyon 
At the same time, Sean throws a nickel straight down with an initial velocity of 4.00 meters per second. Now, before we get into the problem and some other questions, let's talk about what happens when an object is rising because somebody threw it up or falling because it's falling down through the air. Explain what happens to objects which are dropped or thrown in the air so they're rising or falling in the air. Now, we're talking about objects that do not have their own power. We're not talking about birds or airplanes, right, or um, hot air balloons which have some power, right, you're heating up the air and that makes them accelerate upwards. We're talking about objects like rocks. You throw them in the air and they do not have their own power. So objects rising, you throw it up or falling, right? It's coming down or you drop it down in the air without their own power are said to be in free fall. They accelerate at a rate of negative 9.81 meters per second squared. The earth is pulling these objects down and that causes them to accelerate. Now remember, accelerate can mean increasing speed or decreasing speed. Now we're going to cheat a little bit and we're going to make believe that negative uh, 10.0 is actually three significant figures. It's not. Obviously the three significant figures are negative 9.81. But when we do problems, we're going to cheat and we're going to make believe that negative 10.0 is actually three significant figures. And it's fine. We're going to use negative 10. Now, if you throw an object up like a rock, the speed decreases on the way up and increases on the way down. It is accelerating the entire time. Now, just one more time. At what rate are objects accelerated down within about 50 miles of Earth's surface? They're accelerated at a rate of negative 9.81 meters per second squared Right? This is the acceleration, which is also sometimes labeled little g. All right? uh, the acceleration due to gravity of the Earth or any other planet can be a or you could say g. All right? And we're going to make believe that the Earth is negative 10 all right? meters per second squared. Okay, so the point here any time an object is flying through the air and it does not have its own power and you're trying to figure out what's happening up and down, you can use A equals negative 10 meters per second squared. We're going to need this information in this problem because Giovanni dropped a nickel. All right, let's see here. Giovanni dropped a nickel, drop, and Sean through the nickel, wham, through the nickel, straight down. Not the same. So here we are now to list the givens for problem number four. All right, now keep in mind, you've got two different people and two different nickels. So we're going to make two columns for the givens. All right. Um, okay, so the givens. All right, what are we given? Well, the time... The time is the same for both nickels. Calculate the velocity and the displacement of Giovanni's nickel after three seconds, and then do the same for Sean's nickel. So how far down did Giovanni's nickel uh, fall, all right, and how fast was it going after three seconds, and the same thing for Sean's nickel. So the times are the same for the two situations. Now the acceleration is going to be the acceleration due to gravity, so that's going to also be the same for both nickels. So I'm just going to put negative 10 meters per second squared for both. All right, now, um, the displacement, all right, we don't know. That's one of the things we're trying to find. All right, displacement here, displacement there. All right, we'll say the displacement for Giovanni and the displacement for Sean. All right, the initial velocity, all right, if Giovanni drops a nickel, his initial velocity is zero. Now, Sean throws the nickel straight down, 
All right, so that velocity is 4, but since he threw it down, that would be negative 4. Okay, so V initial over here. And I don't want to get too crazy here. I mean, I could put VIG, VIS. All right, I don't want to get too crazy with uh, subscripts. All right, we'll just keep track here. Uh, negative 4.00 meters per second is the initial velocity for Sean's nickel. All right, so this, this column is going to be Giovanni. This column is going to be Sean. Anything in the middle pertains to both of the nickels. Um, now, V final is what we're trying to find. Calculate the velocity down there. All right, so V final is one of the things we are trying to find. It's going to be meters per second. Um, v final here. Well, this one, this one was just dropped, right? So the initial velocity is zero, right? But this one, we threw it down, wham, right? So um, the initial velocity is faster, and the final velocity is going to be faster, right? Since we threw it down, we gave it some velocity at the beginning of the problem, all right? But we don't know what that number is yet, all right? Now, um... Average velocity, we don't know, all right? Average velocity, we do not know, and we probably don't need. All right, so we've got V initial, A, and T. We're trying to find V final, all right? Um, so what I'm going to do is move all of these givens over, all right? And we'll pick the right equations and get ourselves some answers. All right, how far down after three seconds? So... Uh, we're trying to find first how far down that would be the displacement. We're trying to find that first for both nickels and then the velocity, all right, for both nickels. We'll just put that there, all right. So we're trying to find the displacement and the final velocity for both nickels, all right. So here we go, all right. Now we're trying to find how far down. All right, so that would be A. All right. Now, how far down would be the uh, displacement? Now, we have V initial, we have T, and we have A. So equation number four is making sense. All right, D equals V initial T plus one-half AT squared. All right, now we're going to have to do that for both nickels. Okay. Now, for Giovanni, Giovanni dropped his nickel, so the initial velocity was zero. He just let it go, all right? So V initial is zero. Zero times T, the T is also zero, all right? Zero times T, that whole thing goes away. So this is going to be D equals one-half AT squared. Now here, the initial velocity, Sean threw it down, wham! So it's down, it's negative, all right? And the initial uh, velocity, all right, is negative 4, so that's not uh, canceling out. Now, um, everything is negative, all right? The initial velocity is negative, the acceleration is negative, the displacement down is going to be negative. Since everything is negative, we do not have to put negatives in the equation. Since everything is negative, all right, everything's going to be negative, all right? We do not have to put the negatives in the equation. Um, if we put them in there, it's going to come out right. If we don't put them in there, then we just have to remember that when we get the displacement for an answer, it's negative. All right, so here we go. All right, so D equals VIT plus one-half AT squared. All right, now, here, one-half, all right, A, all right, is 10 meters per second squared. T is three seconds squared. All right, so what we've got is nine, right? Half of 10 is five. Nine times five is 45 meters. Now, three significant figures, 45.0 meters. Now, we know it's down, so the correct answer is negative 45 meters. All right, we know that the nickel went down 45 meters, negative 45 meters. All right, 
Now, if you had put the negative in here, you would have gotten negative anyway. All right, over here, V initial, all right, is 4 meters per second. 4 meters per second. The time is 3 seconds, all right, plus 1 half. A is 10 meters per second squared. The time is 3 seconds that gets squared. All right, so what do we have here for an answer? All right, D equals 12, right, plus 3 squared is 9, half of 10 is 5, 9 times 5 is 45, 12 plus 45, all right, is going to be 57.0 meters. So the displacement is negative 57.0 meters. Now I tell you what I'm going to do, just so that I have enough room here to finish the problem. All right, I'm just going to put the negative up top here. We don't need that. All right, get rid of that. All right, so my answer is negative 45, negative 57.0 meters. Okay, now, B. What is the speed of each nickel after falling for three seconds? All right, so the final velocity, V final, equals V initial plus AT. All right, V final over here equals V initial plus AT. All right, now, once again, um, here, let's put, in, let's put in the answers here. Okay, just get those in there. All right, we've got here negative 45 meters. Here we've got negative 57 meters. All right, now, here, V initial here is still zero. All right, goodbye. And V initial here is still negative four. Now, um, everything here is negative. I've got a negative acceleration. My velocity, when the nickel is falling down, the velocity is negative, everything is negative. Okay, so I don't have to put the negatives in. All right, so 10 meters per second squared times three seconds. All right, so what's the speed after three seconds? V final is, all right, 30.0 meters per second, and we know that it is negative. It is down. 30 meters per second down. So over here, all right, over here, we've got negative 30.0 meters per second. We'll have this in just a minute. All right, over here, um, V initial. All right, now, this is negative and negative, and this is going to be negative. Everything is negative. One direction, it's not slowing down, all right? So we've got here 4 meters per second plus 10 meters per second squared times 3.00 seconds. All right, so what we've got here, all right, uh, 4 plus 30 is going to be V final is 34.0 meters. So V final is negative 34 Point zero meters. All right, negative 34.0 meters per second. <laughs> Fix that unit. Okay, so um, we don't need the average velocity. All right, we know that everything in this problem is down, 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 down. So everything is negative. All right, and um, these are the answers. Okay, now try to do the problem on your own. Let's get all the given information listed for problem number five. This time, Giovanni tells Sean to try something different. Throw the nickel up into the air. So Sean launches the nickel straight up with an initial velocity of 30.0 meters per second. So, so far we've got V initial is 30 meters per second right here. V initial positive. He's going, he threw the nickel straight up. So that's positive 30 meters per second. Okay? Now, um, 
Okay, so, so far we have one piece of information. Now, anytime something is flying through the air and it doesn't have its own motor, it's going to be affected by the Earth's acceleration due to gravity. So the acceleration due to gravity we can put in right away negative 10 meters per second squared. And I thought of that because after I finished reading this, I only had one number. And one number isn't enough to answer a lot of questions. So I'm thinking to myself, well, what, what am I missing here? You're missing a number that's implied or inferred from what's happening in the, in the question. Okay, A would be calculate how long it takes the nickel to reach maximum height. Well, we want to know how long, how many seconds. That's one of the things we're trying to find. Now, we know that V final at maximum height is zero. So I stuck it in there. <laughs> v final at maximum height is zero. Because when, the, when an object is, you throw it straight up, its speed decreases, decreases, decreases until the speed is zero. It stops briefly. So at the maximum height, V final is zero. All right, so that's one of our, our questions there, is how long it's going to take to reach maximum height. So this is one of the things we're trying to find. All right, what else are we trying to find here? Calculate the velocity of the nickel at 2 seconds and at 4 seconds. All right, how fast is it going at 2 seconds? And how fast is it going at 4 seconds? All right, so these are things we're also trying to find. And finally... Calculate the maximum height. How many meters up is the object at maximum height? All right, so that would be how many meters right there. And these would be how many meters per second. We'll fill that in as soon as we get the answer. We're running out of space here. Too many questions. All right. So um, what I'm going to do now is move the givens over here so that we have lots of room to do all the problems. All right, and remember, um, what you'll do is you'll watch the whole solution and then go back to a point where the problem, uh, like, like here, right here, where you can read the question and it's, it's blank. None of the answers have been filled in yet, all right, and try to do the problem completely on your own. Actually, go back to before I filled in the givens. You should be practicing filling in the givens on your own also. Here we go. Uh, the first thing we're asked to find is the time to reach maximum height. All right, so we have V initial, V final at maximum height, and acceleration. So the best equation would be this one. And since we're trying to find time, we're going to switch the T and the A. We're going to switch the inverses. The version of the equation we'll be using, T equals V final minus V initial over A. All right, so let's start plugging in. Now, this is the first time that we're going to have to put positives and negatives into the equation. Be very, very careful because in the same equation, we've got a positive direction up and a negative direction down. The initial velocity is positive up. The acceleration due to gravity of the Earth is negative down. Whenever you have two different directions going into the same equation, you have to use positives and negatives. Otherwise, the answer is going to come out wrong. All right, so um, T equals, all right, V final is zero. So V final goes right away. All right, goodbye. Get rid of V final. So we've got here, there's a negative, all right? That, that negative is still there, and this is positive 30. I don't have to put the positive, all right? We know it's positive 30, all right? Divided by, now this is negative 10 meters per second squared. Now, these two negatives are going to cancel, so the time to reach maximum height is 3.00 seconds. All right. Now, the next part of the question, B, was asking, what is the velocity of the ball, uh, the nickel, sorry, 
what is the velocity of the nickel at two seconds and at four seconds? I mean, technically, we've got two more givens here. We've got two seconds and four seconds. My time I can fill in now up here, all right, is three seconds to reach maximum height. That was one of the questions, all right? So technically, I've got two more givens here. I've got two seconds and four seconds. Now, keep in mind, all right, the, the nickel goes up, all right, the nickel comes down, all right, straight up and straight down. I've drawn it kind of as a parabola. Uh, so it's a little bit easier to see, but basically the nickel goes straight up and straight back down. I mean, technically the drawing would look like this, straight up, straight back down. But that makes it a little, a little difficult to see, you know, what's, how the nickel is progressing through the air. All right, if this is three seconds up here, then two seconds, all right, is over here somewhere, all right, and four seconds, all right, is over here somewhere. Okay, so what's the velocity of the bullet, uh, of, oh my goodness, what's the velocity of the nickel on the way up? What's the velocity of the nickel on the way down? If this is three seconds at the top, then two seconds must be on the way up, and four seconds must be on the way down. All right? Now, again, you also want to notice that the velocity going up should be positive. The velocity coming down should be negative. All right, so take note of all these little things. This is all of your common sense. All right? So here we go for B. All right, we want a final velocity at 2 seconds and at 4 seconds. So let's rearrange this equation. Let's get V final. All right, let's get V final by itself. So we can start with A equals V final minus V initial over T. Cross multiply right? V final minus V initial equals AT. We're trying to find V final, so I'm going to add V initial to both sides, get rid of that. So the equation I'll be using, which is listed on your reference tables as equation number three, but it's really just a different version of equation number two. I think the, I think the people who designed the, the reference tables are insulting our intelligence by putting the same equation um, written in two different forms, but that's just me. All right, so that's the equation we're going to be using to find the final velocity uh, at a certain time. Okay, so here we go. Let me get rid of this, All right, and I'm going to move that equation down here. We're going to have to do it twice, once for two seconds and once for four seconds. V final equals V initial plus AT. V final equals, I put it straight down, though. Let's put it straight down. We're going to try to fit everything on the uh, on the whiteboard at one time. All right, and then here, um, v final is going to be v initial plus at. All right, so um, v initial was positive thirty meters per second plus a is negative ten meters per second squared, and the time is two seconds. Thirty plus negative 20 would be 10. So V final at that point was positive 10 meters per second. All right, V final at two seconds here, all right, is positive 10 meters per second. What about V final at four seconds? All right, V initial again was positive 30 meters per second, A negative 10 meters per second squared, T is 4 seconds, all right, so at this point, at 4 seconds, the final velocity is going to be 30 plus negative 40, so it's going to be minus 10. V final equals negative 10, but we said that the velocity on the way up is going to come out positive. The velocity on the way down is obviously going to come out negative. And this is coming out correct. All right, everything is nice and symmetric. All right, so this is negative 10 meters per second. All right. And the last question was how high? How high does the nickel go? All right, so let's calculate this now. D, we're trying to find D. All right, and let's use equation number uh, three. 
number three for that, I would say. All right, D equals V initial T. Uh, I'm sorry, equation four. <laughs> okay, displacement equals VIT plus one half AT squared. All right, so D equals V initial is positive 30 meters per second. Now, at maximum height, all right, where we want to find the displacement at maximum height would be three seconds, all right? So that's three seconds plus, all right, one half. A is negative 10 meters per second squared. T is three seconds squared. Okay? So, all right. We've got D equals, all right, 30 times 3 is 90. Uh, 3 squared is 9. Half of 10 is 5, all right, ne negative 5. Half of negative 10 is negative 5. So 9 times negative 5 is minus 45. All right, so the height, the maximum height that the nickel achieves, all right, is positive 45.0 meters. Right, that's how high up the nickel goes. All right, so here we are. 45 meters is the answer. All right, we answered all of those. We answered all of those. All right, so what you want to do now, go back to a point before I listed all the givens for this problem. Try to do the problem completely on your own. List all the givens on your own. Figure out all the equations you should use on your own. Rearrange the equations if necessary. If you're trying to find time, it has to be T equals. If you're trying to find displacement, it has to be D equals. All right? So practice, practice, practice. It's the same as, you know, if, if you're on, if you play an instrument, it's the same as practicing your instrument. You get much, much better at the instrument if you're practicing. If you're on a football team or a basketball team, you get much, much better. Or the, the team is going to... The team is going to suck if you, if you don't practice. You know this. Well, it's the same with physics. If you don't practice, 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 you're not going to get really good at it. So practice, 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 so you get really good at physics.